Hello and welcome to the 26th installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to learn how to manipulate almost any palette through hex editing. I'll be using one new piece of software called Advanced Palette Editor, or APE, by HackMew. This video will be broken down into the following segments. How do I use VBA's Palette Viewer? How do I edit the battle scene text box? And what's the danger in all of this? I'm sure you're familiar with editing the palettes of tile sets using Advanced Map, which I've gone over in some of my very first tutorials. But what about all of the other colors in the game, like text boxes, menu backgrounds, and literally any other color that shows up? For a lot of these, it's not a good idea to just edit their palettes color by color. Instead, you're going to want to import an entire image and replace the old images using something like Unlicensed, a tool by HackMew. But that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. As luck would have it, manipulating palettes color by color is actually a very tedious and error-prone process, but it's necessary if you want to be able to customize some of the more minute details of your hack. Throughout this entire tutorial, we're going to be editing the battle scene text box in Fire Red, but the process is identical in each of the Gen 3 games. At the top of the VBA GUI, click Tools, Palette Viewer, while you're on the same battle screen as me. A new dialog box should pop up. Don't get intimidated when you see all of the random colors. We're going to focus only on what's important to us, and then use that data. Ignoring everything under the sprite section, take a look at everything under the background section. These are all of the colors that are currently loaded which the background of the scene is using. You'll also notice that the text box is currently loaded. This means that the colors of the text box are visible somewhere in this mess of colors, but where exactly are they? The first way of trying to identify them is to just eyeball the colors that you see in the scene versus the colors that you see in the background section. If you can match the color you want to edit to a color in that section, then good for you. But there's an issue. Sometimes there will be duplicate colors that are of the same color that you want to edit. In this case, note that colors that sort of go together are typically near each other in the background section. So, since the text box has some browns and it also has a dark blue, if we were trying to change the dark blue color, we might want to look for a couple of browns and a dark blue that are pretty close to each other. If you can find that, then you've probably found the exact color entries that you're looking for. Another way that you can hone which colors you're looking for is to load the same colors in a different scene if you can. I've switched from a battle with the player's rival to a battle with the wild Pokémon, and many of the loaded colors have disappeared. The ones that haven't disappeared, and more importantly, haven't changed since last scene, are needed by the game in both cases. The only colors that are needed in both cases are the ones that make up the text box, which is exactly what we're looking to edit. Taking the time to do the comparisons, you should get the idea that the entries to the top right are the ones that correspond to the text box. Now we're going to start editing. To begin, we need to find this cluster of colors in Advanced Palette Editor, or APE. Open APE and load your ROM. In order to see the palette in here, we need to know exactly where it's at in the ROM. To do this, go back to Palette View in VBA, and click on the slate gray color, which is the color of the text box background. Now open HXD or any other hex editing tool. Load your ROM and open the dialog box to find a string of hex values. This can be done by hitting the Ctrl and F keys or by going to the search menu item and clicking Find. Once you configure the data type box to hex values, you need to enter a few of the color entries so you can find them properly in your ROM. To do this, go back into palette view and take note of the hex value at the bottom of the dialog box. In this case, it's 18C5. We want to switch this value around a little to say C518 instead. So we're essentially just swapping the third and fourth numbers with the first and second numbers. Type this value into HXD. Then do the same thing for the next one or two color values. So for fuchsia, I'd type 1F7C, and for the gray color, I would type 7C73. That should be enough. Go ahead and search. You'll be taken to the exact offset of the slate gray color. In this case, it's at D004F1. Now type that offset into Ape's offset box and click the load button. As you can see, a bunch of colors were loaded. 
These colors correspond to the ones you see in palette view, for the most part. Click the copy button and these colors will be translated to the bottom set of entries, allowing you to edit them. The first color we're going to edit is the background of the text box, so the slate gray color. I'm going to change it to something kind of ugly so we can easily tell if our change worked or not. Light blue works fine, so hit replace, then hit load, and the old color will be overwritten in the ROM. Sometimes it'll say that it's unsafe to replace colors, just do it anyways, it doesn't make a big difference. Next we need to test it. Reload your ROM and VBA and check it out. As you can see, it definitely worked. We can also see that the color changed in the palette view as well. This is very good. If you happen to change a color that didn't end up corresponding to the targeted graphic on screen, then I suggest you immediately change it back. If you don't remember what that value of the old color was, then I suggest you load a backup of your ROM. You may have also noticed that the color of the arrow has changed to a light blue, since it shared the same color entry as the background of the text box. This is unfortunate, but unavoidable. We'll just have to make it look better by messing with the color scheme a little bit later on. We're going to repeat the same process for one of the brown colors now, but more quickly. The value in HXD should be B926. I'm already near the correct offset in HXD, so I just need to move forward a little and it's right there, at D004FC. Load the correct offset in APE and hit the copy button again. I'm going to change it to a darker blue. Remember to hit replace, then load, and the color will be uploaded to your ROM. Reload the game and check it out. That worked too. There are a few pixels of a darker brown on the edges, but we can also change those pretty easily, using the same process. After messing with this for a while, I ended up with a style I like, but using Ruby version instead of Fire Red. Here's the version I made for Fire Red, with the arrow looking much more natural. Although it's a very interesting and fun design change, you need to be careful with this kind of stuff. If you branch out to editing other palettes using this method, make sure you don't edit anything that doesn't correspond to what you want to change. If you do and make some mistakes, make sure to change it back or delete the ROM and restore backup. Another danger of doing this is some graphics share the same color slot. For instance, that arrow and the text box background in Fire Red. When it comes to other graphics, there tends to be a lot of overlap as well. Even if you don't see the shared effects immediately, they may pop up unexpectedly later on in your hex development, so it may be a good idea to log in a text file, every change you've made to the palettes, and where those particular changes were made in the ROM in case you decide to roll back to the original colors due to an unforeseen disaster. That's everything I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either over at Poke Community or right here in my video's comment section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 27th installment of this series.